Hello there guys and girls, welcome to another tutorial on my channel. This time we're gonna talk about Scene Director by Ellsworth, a mod that was created specifically for the purpose of making Machinima with Grand Theft Auto V. Now I know that in parts this has been done before by other people, especially Ellsworth himself, and I know that this mod has been out for years now, but I think there are many viewers out there who like the comprehensive way I explain shit, and also I wanna put this into my tutorial playlist so that creators who just start out find all the necessary info in one place. Some of this stuff from this video has already been covered in my Machinima Masterclass, but in this workshop we're gonna have more time to look into the features of this mod in detail, because at times it isn't really self-explanatory. I'm gonna try to keep it beginner friendly. I structure this video into a bunch of chapters which you can see on the right side. All the links you'll need as well as time codes to skip to another chapter are in the video description. Now without further ado, let's get started. Installation Go to the mod page on gta5mods.com and download the package. Like with any mod in GTA 5, you will additionally need Script Took 5 by Alexander Blade, which you will also find to download on GTA 5 mods. After extracting the Scene Director archive, you will find a couple of files in there. All you have to do is to copy and paste these particular files into your main GTA game directory. The ASI and INI files are basically the heart of the script, while the TXT file right here is a list of all available animations from the game. The same goes for the so called synchronized animations. I'll get to that later on. If you wanna use these stage lights, which highly I recommend, you gotta do a few extra steps to install them. Here's how. First, go to your main game directory again and create the following folder path, if you haven't already. Mods, Update, X64, DLC Packs. Go back to your download of Scene Director and copy this folder over to the directory you just created. For step 2 you need to tell the game that the directory you've just created even exists, so you put it in the file dlclist.xml. To do that you navigate to the directory called update in GTA 5, where you will find the file update.rpf and copy it to the equivalent location in your mods folder which you created before. Now you boot up the tool open 4. If you don't know what this is yet, please watch my tutorial about it. And then go to mods slash update. As you can see, this is the same directory you created in Windows Explorer. And now you double click the RPF file and go to common slash data. And there it is, the file dlclist.xml. Extract it to your desktop and open the file with Notepad++ or any other editor. At the very end, add the following line. This tells your game that there is another folder to load the one you created before. As you can see Rockstar Games does the same thing with their DLCs they release, like import, export, air races or gun running. To apply the changes switch back to open 4 and activate the edit mode. You can now directly drag and drop the edited XML file into this window and it will automatically save. This might seem like a lot of work but it will be worth it and you'll see why in a couple of minutes. One more thing here. The default hotkey for this menu is F10. If you want to change that, you open the file scenedirector.ini in your game directory and enter any key you like right there. Of course it should be a key you're not using for anything else. With that, you have successfully completed installation of Scene Director. Let's switch over to GTA 5 so I can show you how to actually use the tool. The Basics To boot up the menu, you just hit the hotkey and there it is. The controls are on your numpad on the keyboard, so 8 is up, 2 is down, 4 is left and 6 is right. Num5 is used to confirm actions or selections. The hotkey F10 also closes the interface again. You should always pay attention to the controls bar at the very bottom of the screen which will give you hints about how to activate certain features. If you're wondering what this button icon means, it's your left alt key on the keyboard. Also there will be a variety of helpful texts popping up above your minimap. Keep an eye out for those as well. The foundation for understanding Scene Director are the two different modes, called Setup and Active. In Setup mode you can prepare an entire scene by recording what the actors do one by one. If all this is done you can switch to Active and all the things you prepared will happen at the same time as if you were the master of all these little puppets. Since this is a movie making tool, you're gonna need actors. The first step you're always gonna make is to add the actor to slot 1. Otherwise you won't have many options at all. If you spot a character on the street, which you think suits a machinima, just get close to it and hit possess near aimed. If the character is further away, you have to aim at him or her with a gun first. This feature can also be useful if you have a lot of pads on a scene and want to slide into a specific sleeve, so to speak. 
One thing I want to advise you to make a habit of is to give your actors names so you can identify them quickly. Navigate to the name entry, hit num5 on your keyboard and type something suitable. If you don't name your actors and switch to the wrong one by that, it can cause you a lot of extra work like reapplying animations, waypoints or whatever. Another cool feature is to clone an actor. If you clone your actor while shooting interior scenes, the clone will often be ported to the roof of the building, so you might have to teleport back into the filming location. It will create an exact copy of the model you're using right now. Which by the way also works if you sit in any vehicle. In this case the car or boat or whatever is copied as well when you click clone actor and car. If you switch your actor's model in between, for instance after cloning, there will be a pop-up message above your minimap to update the actor so scene director knows the model name. Just select the actor you've just changed and hit the delete key. Now you can add the actor again and the model is updated. In the actors menu you will find the walk styles. You can apply these with other trainers too, but it's nice to have them in here as well. And I recommend you to use these if appropriate, because the regular multiplayer pet walk style looks really boring after a while, because everyone is used to it from playing the game online. The same goes for the walk speed, which you can switch between walking and running, but personally I've never needed this particular feature. The same goes for the actor's health. It can be helpful to change this if, let's say you want to create a shootout between regular soldiers and a juggernaut, the latter of which should have more health than the others. But in that scenario, I'd advise you to make the juggernaut invincible with menu PC or any other trainer. That's easier for recording scenes. When you have a bunch of actors, you can also save them for later use. So just hit save actors here. This feature could be improved though, since it only saves the most current set of actors. So unlike a tool like skin control, you can't load a bunch of actors for different scenes. If you wanted to do this, you'd have to go to your main game directory and find the file scene director underscore save dot XML. You can now copy it to your project directory and give it a suffix like underscore actors car chase or something like that. If you ever want to reuse this set of actors, just put it back into the game directory and remove the addendum in the file name. When you load up saved actors, it's gonna pop them just right up where you were standing. So if you want to shoot at a specific location, make sure to teleport or drive there before loading your actors to save time. After showing you these basic features, I now want to introduce you to some more advanced stuff. To the best of my current knowledge. Recording mode. This is a very interesting feature if you want to create scenes with multiple actors that all do a different thing at the same time. It lets you record a variety of actions for the current actor, such as movement on foot or in vehicles, entering and exiting vehicles, playing synchronized animations or animation sequences, scenario actions from other mods like menu, gunfire, going into cover as well as jumping and climbing. However, and I want to say this right at the start, the results of the recorded actions may vary depending on what you're trying to do, which in theory makes this a great tool, but in practice it can be tricky and faulty. I'll show you why in a few minutes. You'll notice there are two different modes of recording, which are equivalent to the two states I explained in the beginning. I'll take my usual example again, two guys walking down the street. For the first actor you're gonna use the recording in setup mode by hitting num5 and walking from here to over there. When you're done with the desired activities, you hit Alt R on your keyboard to stop the recording. Then you hit the button back to start, which will bring all the actors back to their original positions and into their resting state. You'll notice that actors sitting in cars will do a little honk while being positioned by scene director. Depending on how many pawns you have in this game, it will take a couple of seconds, so be patient before you give the game any other input. By the way, if your actors are inside helicopters, the starting point will also be remembered on the Z-axis or the vertical axis, which means that they will hover in the air after you switch to another actor. But oftentimes wind will influence the position of the helicopter, so the position might change over time. It can make for some cool shots though. Now let's skip back to our original train of thought again. I've shown you just now how the first recording mode works. Well, and the second mode is basically the same, only that the scene gets set to active so you can see your other actors performing their actions to be able to time it better. The rest of the features is exactly the same. 
Watch out though, it's very important that you realize what back to start means because the starting point can accidentally be changed if you don't pay attention. The starting point is set at the very moment you put your scene from setup into active mode. So if these two guys stand like this and you set it to active, we can start walking together. Then you deactivate the scene and go back to start. But when for instance we walk for a bit and you hit active again, you'll see that once you go back to the start, the actors will have a different position than you had originally planned as marked by this less than subtle arrow. Of course you can and should use this method to willingly change the starting positions of actors, but I want you to be aware of not changing it on accident because it can cost you a lot of time. You can always test a recording for each individual actor with this button right here. This way you won't have to start the entire scene for all actors. If the timing of your recording is off with the actions of other actors, you can set a delay for the recording. It isn't really explained anywhere around here, but to delay the recording for one second, you type 1000 in here, 2000 for 2 seconds, 5000 for 5 seconds, and so on. There is also a feature that lets you copy a recording to all other actors, which could be useful for some scenes, but personally I have never needed it in any of my videos. The problem I have with the recording mode is that it's not replicating all your actions accurately at all. For example, if you want to use a police officer closing in with covering fire, you just aim, walk and fire, right? But if you go and use the test recording feature, it looks very different and basically unusable for machinima in my opinion. Nobody shoots like that, even the movement is jittery. My guess is that scene director can't record all these parallel inputs from walking, aiming and shooting, but I lack the technical knowledge to confirm this. Also, even if you use the recording mode while scene is active, the timing scenes off afterwards. I tested it by having one guy walk around and another circling him at the same time. Here's the comparison between what I recorded and what is being replayed. It is a very different result. It totally fails at doing complex patterns as demonstrated in this obstacle path I created for testing purposes. But still, generally for running, walking and driving in straight lines or very simple paths, the recording mode is a great tool. One thing that is very practical is the button for mouth movement. This used to be an individual mod by the infamous Jedi Josh, but it's now integrated in Scene Director. Just press J on your keyboard to make the mouth move for as long as you need. You can try to read your text from the script while recording this to get a better timing. Admittedly, the mouth movement does look a little bit random, kinda like chewing really. Also when you let go of the button, the mouth will often close very rapidly, which looks unnatural for a human being. Those are just my two cents on the matter, which is why I prefer triggering mouth movement with the voice options in Simple Trainer. Oh, I'm so very scared of you. Let's move on to the animation section because with these, the recording mode can play out its advantage over other trainers. Animations. Using custom animations is almost obligatory if you want to create truly unique machinima, so Scene Director has a feature that suits well here. This is still on beta, but up to now it didn't make any trouble in my setup. In the animations menu you can change the type of animation. Unfortunately I don't think these options are of great use compared to the animation flags in menu or anim viewer, which I've shown partly in my machinima masterclass. The biggest problem I see here is that Scene Director can't loop animations in here, which is kinda sad, cause often you're gonna need sitting animations or standing animations that loop perfectly and you can't do that manually. Don't even try it, boy. But as Jupid pointed out, go subscribe to his channel if you haven't yet. Finding animations can be much quicker in Scene Director. Here's how. Go to Single Animation Preview and it will play all of the in-game animations in order automatically. If you want to go through this list at your own pace, I recommend you to press L in order to loop the animations. Then you can press B and N to move back and forth between animation previews. The animation names at the top of the screen will give you more info on what mission or situation the anims are from. Of course now you don't want to watch over 99,000 animations in order, which is why you filter this list by pressing F on your keyboard. You will see a message pop up that reads enter text to filter animations, operators and or not can be used. This means that you can for example search for rifle which brings up 2086 animations. If you type 
rifle and sniper, you will get 331 animations, which is a much more manageable amount of NMs to go through. When you have found a suitable animation, write down the number you see at the start. Then you stop the preview by pressing C. To add the animation to your shortcut list, you have to enter the number now. If it succeeded, you should be able to trigger the animation by pressing Alt Num 1. You can always remove an animation by selecting the entry and pressing the delete key. Even if you don't want to use the animation within Scene Director because it can't be looped, you can still use the animation name you found and quickly search for that in another trainer if you like. It's really a matter of personal taste. I've talked to different creators from the community and some prefer working animations in Scene Director, others like myself or Dougie prefer Menu PC. But in a couple of minutes I will show you a cool way to actually utilize the animations with the help of Scene Director. Director. Probably the coolest feature in this submenu are the synchronized animations. These will be applied to multiple actors at the same time. You can choose between a variety of animations from assorted categories like advanced melee, friendly interaction or celebration. The number in parentheses shows you how many there are. Since it's GTA, there's a lot of aggressive interactions, naturally. On the right you'll see how many actors are needed to perform the action. Sometimes you can play a 3 actor anim with only 2 actors as well. For now I'm gonna show you beat up dog worker intro. There is one guy being threatened but as of now the setup is wrong because the guy I want to be the victim here has the wrong role. The way these synced anims work is that the order of the actors matters. So to change that you will have to remove the actor 1, switch to actor 2 and remove that one too. When you re-add this actor, he will now become the new number one. Then you possess the other guy near you again and he becomes actor two. If you preview the synced animation again, the characters are in the right order. You can now press A to add this to a shortcut, just like you did with the single animations before. While this animation is played, you can't use the J hotkey for mouth movement in recording mode. But you can play the animation with the shortcut and use simple trainer to trigger voice events. I don't want any trouble, sorry. Now you can see that the synced animation isn't placed properly because this guy's hand is obviously leaning against a wall. You can now try to position it correctly by walking your actor 1 into another location. But this technique isn't very precise and hard to predict, especially in narrow rooms you won't even have the freedom to walk wherever you want. This is why you will need the edit scene mode, which I will show you in the next chapter. Edit scene. Another helpful feature is the edit scene mode. This is also in beta and admittedly it does crash the game quite often for me. I won't be able to explain every detail about how this feature works because of this. Nonetheless, let me try and give you an impression of how it works. Admittedly, I'm super thankful that I can invert the camera control by pressing I on my keyboard here. I am used to an inverted Y axis since my N64 childhood, I guess. But if you go into this mode just like that, you won't see much. In order to actually use this, you will need to have some sort of recording first. So for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna make Franklin run around on this open field while recording mode is active. Once you go back into edit scene, you'll see that there are all these yellow markers which show you the exact moment scene director recorded one of your actions. If you get closer to one of the markers, it'll turn blue, which means it's selected. You can also select a recording marker by moving to the top of this list and pressing num5 to switch. As you can see, the name of the actor is in parentheses because when you record the actions of multiple actors, it can get chaotic. By pressing spacebar once, you can now quickly edit the position. While the marker is red, you can move it left, right, back and forth with the camera to change the path. These markers are basically just like keyframes in any video editing or video effects software. To lock the new position, press spacebar again. You can repeat that step for any marker, so if you want to have Franklin move to the left instead of right, move all the markers there. You'll notice that the last marker isn't called walking anymore, but cover. Somehow there is another marker here because I moved Franklin while in cover. You can deactivate unwanted markers like this by setting the status to disabled. In order to test your recording, you can then set the scene into active mode again and watch what happens. You'll see that the character won't actually hit the markers exactly, which is what I was talking about in the recording mode chapter. You can change the walk speed value between 1 and 2. 2 being running and 1 being walking. But the thing is that you're gonna have to do this for every single recording marker. My gosh. The rest of these values I really do not want to explain because in my experience and during testing sessions, this was a pain in the ass to use and I can't be bothered showing you this. 
Sounds good, doesn't work. Editing scenes can also be useful for positioning synchronized animations, for instance, because these are often hard to place by walking around. So let's get back to our example with the dock worker being pushed against the wall. If you still have the shortcut for the synced anim in your list, you start the recording mode again and push this shortcut. If you go into edit scene mode, you will again see the recording marker for triggering this particular animation, which will then be replayed in a slow version, so you have time to position it nicely. Hit spacebar again and then move the cam. You will see the characters moving with the marker this time. In case the rotation is off, just change the value by entering a digit between 0 and 359, you know, like the degrees of a circle. I'm gonna try 0 degrees here because I know for a fact that these walls I built here are oriented by the default axis rotation. Then you can position the actors again. In this menu you will have to use the recording location though, otherwise the animation will be played where the actor is standing. In here you can also make the animation loop if you wish. This would allow you to take control over a fourth actor that can walk up to this group of people and break up the fight. Alright now, let's move on. Combined efforts! Now let's combine the knowledge from the last three chapters into one small example. First of all, you're gonna look for an animation in which a character ducks quickly. So you search for duck not V, which means that you won't see any animations that happen when sitting in vehicles. And boom, there is a cool animation right there. You'll write down the number in front of the name, 72751. Then you press C to stop the preview. In Add Single Animation, you can now enter this very number and the animation will be added to the shortcut list. So you can trigger it by pressing Alt Num 1. Now you switch to another actor and repeat this for the keyword Slap. The animation 06124 looks great, so you add it to the shortcut list. The next step is to start the recording mode for one of the actors and hit the right shortcut. In here Trevor wants to slap Michael, so you record that short bit. Now you do the same for Michael, but this time you use the active recording mode to see when the punch will happen. With the edit scene mode you can then once again edit the positions of the actors more precisely if you have to. Just go about it the same way as I've shown you with the synced animations. It doesn't need to be timed perfectly because as you remember we have the recording delay. This way you can set the value so the timing is perfect. In the end, the scene is going to look like this. You can do that for any kind of animation. Basically, you just created your own synchronized animation, which is super unique. Ain't that fun? Ain't it fun? Let's move on to the waypoint section. Using waypoints. I've shown you how to do car chases or driving scenes in my Machinima Masterclass, but I want to go into more detail here, because using the waypoint option in Scene Director can be a little bit tricky sometimes. <coughs> Let's say you have three actors and want them to drive to a certain location. With any of the actors selected, you can pop up the game's map and set a waypoint. To apply it to an actor, you have to hit num5 on his name in the list and the little waypoint info will show. You can then apply the same waypoint to another actor by activating him. But that means that you can't really switch to another actor now without applying a waypoint. If you don't want this to happen, you have to remove the waypoint from the map after applying it to an actor and before switching to another actor. Scene Director will still remember the waypoint for your actor even even though it's not on the map anymore. This way you can use individual waypoints for all of your actors. If you want to change the current waypoint for all the actors, you click onto the map again and then switch back to all of the actors in order to apply it to them. Otherwise they will go to the previous waypoint which they still remember. If you want to remove a waypoint altogether, just hit the delete key on the actor and reapply his role again. Unfortunately, this will mean that you have to give him an appropriate name every time again. Equivalently to removing a recording, there should be a button right here to remove waypoints as well. If your actors are in cars, you should always change the driving style here too. The direct style means that they're gonna try and go to the waypoint in a straight line, which obviously won't work in the city. Out in the country it might work if there aren't any obstacles blocking the path. For stealthy or everyday scenes I recommend the careful or cruising driving styles because the actors will drive normally and abide traffic laws. The aggressive driving styles are better for action scenes and car chases because they'll run red lights and all that jazz. <laughs> 
weakness the waypoint method has is that you can't really define a custom path. It will often be the shortest distance as per the in-game GPS, but the actors also tend to use another path sometimes, so this feature could definitely be improved. One more thing you need to know is that your actor will not go to the waypoint if you are currently in control of him. Scene director assumes that you want to drive freely in that case. So if you want to have two actors driving without you being involved, you will have to create a third actor which you will be controlling. Let's move on to the lighting section now. Lighting while the lighting is a part of the edit scene module, I wanted to make this a separate section because there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with these so-called stage lights. Do not confuse them with the spotlights within the actor menu because these are basically useless since they do not transfer into your recordings. In order to spawn a stage light, enter the edit scene mode again. Before you hit add light, you should adjust the angle of the camera, because while you can move left, right, back and forth with the added light, it doesn't shine where you aim it once it's spawned. By moving the camera farther away from the target, the light will get softer and less dense. This is how you give your shots a subtle lighting or a very artistic defiant lighting. Also you should experiment with different lights that shine upwards downwards or from the side, all of which create a totally different outcome and message for the movie. A helpful feature is to press G to make the light follow an actor. Press the key multiple times to select the right actor. If you've given the actors appropriate names, it will once again be easier for you to select the chosen one. With a light that follows your actor, you can make the character stand out from the background and therefore create a much more enjoyable shot. But you can even get more creative with these stage lights. By pressing M, you can apply movements to the lights. By pressing R, you can make them rotate. And by pressing F, you can apply different flickering effects. All three of these variables can be combined too. So how about a white light that flickers slowly to simulate a broken lamp? Or try a red light with rotation to simulate a code red alarm. It's really up to your own creative freedom to combine all this. If you don't like the lights you spawned, hit the button clear all lights to delete them. And by the way, if you go to save load, you can also save the stage lights, just like you would when saving actors. Unfortunately, these stage lights only work at night, meaning 9pm till 6am. Also they only work outdoors. There are ways to make the lights work during the day and indoors, but this would go way too far for this tutorial. Also I haven't figured out that shit myself either. So let's move on. World Options and MISC in the last section I want to quickly go over some smaller features I haven't covered yet. For instance the world options. In there you can define if there should be strong wind or regular wind. Also there are different weather options, but you'll find those in any trainer out there. The time lapse feature will speed up the day and night cycle for some cool effects. I prefer using the timescaler mod for this because it has more settings for how fast the time lapse should be. A feature I can highly recommend is the blackout mode which will turn off every light on the map. But by every light I mean every light, so you can't use stage lights in combination with this option. Too bad. While you're sitting in a car you will find two more options in here called Activate Chase and Activate Escort, which allow you to have an actor follow the car you are in control of. Just activate the mode you like and start filming. Last but not least the entry Record Reload, which I highly recommend you to activate if you want to go for realism. What this does is if you're recording an actor that shoots, the reload animation will be replayed in the recording. I've got to reload! If this is deactivated, your characters will never reload in the video. Another cool little gimmick is the keyboard shortcut Alt F, which lets you enter vehicles as a passenger. The actor will automatically pick a free seat starting in the front. Normally when you press the button to enter a vehicle, your character will hijack the car and get in the driver's seat. You can even use this keyboard shortcut during recording mode to make a full squad enter a vehicle at the same time, like in this clip. The so-called firing squad can do the same thing. If you activate it and enter a car, the squad will follow, but you'll have less control over the timing here. What this does best is that all the actors in the list will copy some actions of the one you are in control of, meaning that if you shoot at a gas tank, they will shoot at this gas tank too. They will also switch to the same gun model, even if it has not been equipped for them before. 
hence the name firing squad. This method is of good use if you want to do static shots only because the other actors will not copy your other movements and they will only shoot at actual targets like cars and people, not just anywhere. Also, the feature could be improved if the actors would actually use the guns you give them and not switch to the same one you are using automatically. Oh, and if you aim at another actor, this happens. The shortcut end will explode a nearby car. Other trainers have similar features and maybe it could be cool to have an actor running away from some threat while all the nearby cars blow up. To me it's just a fun gimmick. The shortcut Alt A can also be useful because it's an autopilot. This is different from giving an actor a waypoint because as I said, as long as you're in control of a character, this won't work. But this shortcut is a workaround for that. Just place a waypoint on the map, then set the scene to active, hit Alt A and instantly push the button for the recording mode. The actor will start driving and you will have time to do other stuff with scene director or other trainers like menu. For instance, you can focus on the timing of the lip movement. One last limitation of scene director I wanted to talk about is the number of actors you can use. If your list of actors gets too long, the submenu for the topmost actors can disappear beyond your screen's borders. Personally, I've never created big setups like this, but I know there are some creators out there who do. I think those were all the smaller features I wanted to cover in here. Outro Alright now, I hope you could learn a bunch of new things about this tool. You can combine all the features I've shown you in these chapters at the same time to create massive action scenes. In summary, I want to say that Scene Director has greatly benefited the Machinima community with some cool features, and the UI of this trainer packs more of a punch than you'd expect when you're looking at it for the first time. However, some of the features could be a little more sophisticated, especially the recording mode could be better, Although I have to admit that I don't know if this is even technically possible with a reasonable amount of coding work. And I don't know if that's just me, but sometimes I feel that the UI could be a little more intuitive. Still, even if you use Scene Director mostly to switch between actors and quickly put up creative stage lights, it is a very helpful and creative tool. Okay, this is it for today. I want to thank my dudes on the Discord server for providing me with solid info whenever I wanted to get some facts straight. You'll find links to their channels in my featured list. If you feel I forgot something important or got any facts wrong, please let me know in the comment section. Also, if you have any questions, I will try to help you out to the best of my disabilities. Thank you for watching. Vanova. Over.